Christmas is approaching quickly. Even during this pandemic season, malls and bazaars will be packed with people looking to buy a variety of items. This isn't even taking into account the online shopping list that many individuals check. The truth is that most of the material items individuals purchase over the Christmas season are unnecessary. If they go back and inspect their drawers and cupboards, they will almost certainly uncover a lot of unused items from prior years. They have a lot of personal coffee mugs. Some of these mugs are undoubtedly already being used as pen holders. How many pairs of shoes do you own? Some of these were most likely in their original packaging on the day you purchased them. How many cars do we have? Some have undoubtedly been sitting in our garage for the longest time and we still desire a brand new one. Talking about contentment, we are all capable of being dissatisfied with what we have. We are constantly comparing ourselves to others. One pastor defines comparison as an attitude of dissatisfaction with God's provision for our life that leads to an obsession with having more. God calls this covetousness. The Apostle Paul talks about this in the book of Philippians chapter 4, 10 to 12, in the context of God's provision. The Philippians church is a generous church. He understands how ready the Philippians are to accommodate his needs. There was, however, a way for them to present it to him. And Paul, without a doubt, does not want to push them. He's not going to take advantage of it. He said, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. Paul learned to be content in any circumstance. Lacking in some things isn't a big concern for him because he's previously known what it's like to be at the bottom of his life. As Christians, we sometimes need to go through situations like this to appreciate what we have. We don't mind the box of biscuits that have been sitting in our cabinet for months because we always buy a fresh one. But what happens when we are exposed to financial testing? I'm certain that no food or item in your home will be overlooked. Well, this coming Christmas season, we will surely see people discussing amazing cuisine they ate, a magnificent destination they visited, a joyful family celebration they just had, or a new car they purchased as we scroll through social media. It's quite simple to become envious and begin straining ourselves to obtain this, feeling bad that we don't have them, and losing sight of numerous blessings we certainly have. But those who follow Jesus, however, have the opportunity to experience true contentment. Are you a follower of Jesus? If yes, then learn to be content in whatever situation you are in. As the author of Hebrews reminds us in chapter 13, verse 25, Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Have a great day. Thank you.